All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Scriptic. You may know this game as Dead Man's Phone, but the devs and Electric Noir Studios have rebranded the app as Scriptic. What's really cool about Scriptic is that it is a BAFTA nominated interactive crime drama app with almost a million players globally and both seasons, seasons one and season two, will be releasing on Netflix very soon, which is just freaking amazing. <laughs> super, super cool. Now, huge shout out to the devs who reached out to me and provided me with season one and season two. That way we can show this amazing game on this channel and play through the entirety of the game. Now, if you guys would like to support me and play along with me while we cover this game on this channel, you can use my link in the top of the description down below and download this game for free. Now, if you want to just watch my playthrough of it, that's perfectly okay as well. And if you're enjoying the playthrough of the game, be sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you think of this game in the comments down below. So now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the game. As you saw in the beginning, you saw a quick little video there. as a young man. He was on his back on the ground. It did not look very much living. <laughs> we are playing as a homicide detective who is trying to solve this crime by going through the victim's phones. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. We have here, we have uh, Will talking with Karen. Karen? Karen? Kieran, I think it's Kieran, Kieran and Lucas, and uh, we have this outlined picture of Lucas here. If we click on it, it kind of, it's a picture of Lucas, and you now have discovered a clue on the victim's phone. Uh, let's take, let's take it to the police team to investigate. So let's go ahead and go back to the police team, tap the exit, uh, tap to exit the victim's phone, tap to enter the police chat. It's just a quick tutorial of showing you guys how to go about navigating the game and, and the, 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 the screens here. Let's go ahead and go to intelligence. Identify Lucas and pull records. Intelligence, please identify Lucas. He made some threatening comments on the victim's phone. Here's his picture. Now, we'll go back to those to those comments to see, if, um, see what exactly is being said between Lucas, Will, and Kieran. Sophie here is our intelligence expert. Sure thing, I will scan through our database. You can call me Sophie, by the way. And detective, oh, we're getting a call from Sutherland. Getting a call from Sutherland. Let's go ahead and answer this call. Hi, detective. I've arrived at the scene at the Stafford Tower Block Pecking. All right, so Sutherland's arrived at the crime scene, the Stafford Tower Block in Peckham. What's happening? What's the crime scene set? What's happening? The kid is falling from the block. It's not looking good at all. It's really busy with residents down here. Just hang on a sec. Sir, can you just not cross under the tape? Sorry, it's a crime scene. Um, yeah, thank you for your help. Thanks. Yeah, there's lots of residents down here, but something is suggesting that there's a violent incident earlier on. Could be connected to the fall. So some guys just trying to walk through the crime scene. <laughs> What's wrong with you? He's like, oh, there's yellow tape wrapped up around here. I'm, I'm just gonna go underneath it. I'm, a, I'm not gonna let this yellow tape to, you know, to detract me from from the direction that I want to go. <laughs> so, what's the status on the boy? Probably not good. How's it looking? Let's uh, let's find out what the status of the boy is. Just look at the paramedic now. They're trying to get my attention. Probably not good. Oh, it's not good. No, unfortunately, he's died. Oh. He's gone. Look, it's really busy down here. Let me get up to speed with the other officers that are here, and um, I'll get back to you shortly. All, All right. right, thanks. Thanks, Sutherland. <laughs> detective. Uh, what's your detective name? Oh, first name Tongue, last name Tied, of course. Detective Tongue Tied on the case. Welcome, Detective Tongue Tied. <laughs> This is Yard OS, your police platform. Tap anywhere to continue. From here, you will command your police team and progress your murder investigation. Interview suspects here and see your clues here. Enter the victim's phone here. Good luck. Thank you. All right. What's happening? What's happening, Sutherland? Jerome Jacobs. That's whose phone you've been going through. Pulled his wallet as well. Drone Jacob seems to be the 
Oh, Jerome is 16 years old. We found a clue. 16 years old. Jerome was a resident of the tower block. I didn't see that. Is there a way for me to see the, the clues? Yeah. Jerome was a resident of the tower block. He fell from the Stafford Tower. Okay, so he was a resident at the tower block. Who are we talking to? Sutherland. So that's a picture of Jerome. He's the victim, Jerome Jacobs. 16 years old. Looks like he's a resident of the tower block, right? What's my job? <laughs> I'm, de I'm the detective, but I'm asking the other detective, what's my job? Like, what am I doing here? <laughs> um, let's ask him. Let's ask Sutherland if he's spoken with any of the other officers regarding this crime. He did. Good, good. Wait, way to do your job, Sutherland. PC Bronson and PC McGuire. They've arrived just before paramedics. I've got them taking witness statements now. So, what's our first move here, Tide? <laughs> They're using my last name. Uh, so, crime scene sweep or share crime scene footage. Do a sweep of the crime scene or have him share the crime scene footage. I kind of want to see the footage. It's probably better if we do the, a sweep of the crime scene first. But I kind of want to see the footage. And I'm sure you guys want to see the footage. So... <laughs> Let's go ahead and look. Can can you share the initial footage of the crime scene with me? I I, I kind of I just want to see it. I, I I feel like I need, I'm a visual learner. I need to see so that way I can I can I can go along with my investigation. A police drone has dispatched to the scene. The arrive and arrived with a with the paramedic. Scotland Yard are trialing them for red alerts across London. So we just got another uh another clue there. Let's go ahead and watch this video real quick. Yeah, if you guys could hear the talking in the background, I, I couldn't hardly hear it either. It was kind of mumbly, but the, the quality of the of the, the drone wasn't that great, which Sutherland made a comment about that. It's a bit patchy, I know. We're still getting the hang of all this new tech. All right, and we got, we did see a clue as well. The clue was Sutherland shares police drone footage of the crime scene. Perfect. Let's go back to talking to Southern. Sutherland. Um, is there any more footage? Any more footage at all? These were just taken. Okay, so we have pictures here. Pictures of Jerome's shoes. They did not fly off when he hit the ground. Which I think means something. Like maybe he didn't fall from extremely, like the, the top of the building. Because if he fell from the top of the building, his shoes aren't on his feet anymore. Plain and simple. That's him covered up. And then that's the building he fell from. But he, if he fell from the very, very top of that building, I don't think your shoes stay on when that happens. There, I've seen... <laughs> I've seen plenty of videos of, you know, like skateboarding videos and stuff. They they jump from stairs, and if they fall wrong, their shoes go flying. Like, <laughs> all right. So let's get the crime sweep, crime scene sweep going. Please conduct a thorough sweep of the murder scene. Sutherland, Sutherland, Sutherland is on it. Actions with your police team take time to complete. Okay. Either way, your team to respond in real time. Either. Either wait for your team to respond in real time or tap the skip button to get instant response. So it looks like we got an instant response instant response regardless. So Sutherland is on it. Just finished up the crime scene sweep. Look what we found. Found a mask. Found this little silver. It looks like a silver, like chrome style mask. Possibly gang related. Got uh, forensics get forensics to sweep it for DNA and intelligence to identify its origins. So we can go to forensics and we can send sweep mask for DNA. Hi, Victor. We found a chrome mask at the crime scene. Can you sweep it for DNA? It'll take a few seconds. We didn't need to skip it or anything like that. Vikram, absolutely. It's top of my list. Hey, so not the ideal result. There's, there's a DNA aside from Jerome's, but nothing coming back on our database that's stored, though. 
for future reference. So basically, they, they have separate DNA on the mask that's not Jerome's. However, because it's not showing up in their in their uh, their database, that means that the person's DNA that's on the mask has never been arrested, essentially. Like, they're, they, they've never been, I guess, through the system. They've never been a part of the database. All right. Cheers, Vikram. Thank you for that. Uh, let's ask Vikram how he's doing after we just said goodbye to him. Let's go <laughs> ask him how's life in the lab. Pretty slow. Coffee is good, though. Good. Good. I'm I'm glad. All right. Let's go ahead and go back to the ground. Let's just respond saying that we, we will absolutely doing that now. Any progress on collecting witnesses' statements? Boys? Probably PC McGuire, and, and there's another PC, uh, Bronson, that's right, Bronson and McGuire. We've got him. Unfortunately, no one actually saw the incident. So witness statements suggest multiple assailants. One witness believes he heard the victim shout, Red Man, though that could quite easily be Dead Man. It's funny, 30 years ago, witness statements were all we had. Now they're the least reliable form of evidence. Anyway... Here they are. It seems clear that there was an altercation before the fall. You know, I heard the boy shouting, Red Man, Red Man. Thinking to myself, what is this boy shouting, Red Man, for? You may hear a strange thud. Maybe screaming, knew something that happened, you know. Okay, so that was a witness statement of the gentleman saying he heard somebody yelling, Red Man, Red Man. Was curious about the sound and then heard the thud. And then, I guess, saw Jerome. I didn't see nothing yet, but I could definitely tell there's more than what I'm chasing that boy. I mean, you could hear the wrestling about the commotion. It sounded like a gang of them. Didn't see anything, but heard it happening. Heard the commotion. No, no, to be honest, I haven't, I haven't seen anyone. I, was, I, I just heard all the commotion and came out. And it sounded as if someone was in a fight or something, but that's not unusual around here, so... So three witness statements. No one saw anything. They just heard commotion. <laughs> and then shit hit the fan. Basically all that happened. Let's go ahead and check out our clues real quick. So unidentified DNA from the chrome mask. Witness statements suggest multiple assailants. Witness witness claims to hear victim shout word red man. All right. Let's go ahead and talk with intelligence. We, okay, so that was Sophie talking to us. You can call me Sophie, by the way. And Detective DCI Sutherland was trying to call you, which we already talked about. Uh, let's ask Sophie. Update on Lucas Records. Please identify the Chrome. This Chrome. Let's get an update on Lucas's records. Are oh, those records for Lucas coming along? Here we go. Luke, Lucas Toby Grant, 16 years old. One stint in Young Offenders Program in 2016. Not a huge amount, but more than usual for such a young person. All right. Cheers, my dears. All right. Any, uh, any, anything to identify the origins of the chrome mask? It's creepy. On it. We're going to wait for a few seconds. That way Sophie will be able to reach out to us. We'll read everything that she's, she has to say. It's a pretty standard costume mask sold by a lot of retailers. Increasingly common among South London gangs. We've seen these masks featured in a lot of drill music videos. Who's drill? Is it? I'm guessing drill's a rapper. Drill music videos. What's drill? You really are out of touch. I apologize. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not in touch with the South London gangs. UK drill, it's a subgenre of grime and American drill originating in Brixton around 2012. Typically, drill artists are affiliated with gangs or come from deprived neighborhoods where crime is a way of life for many. Put simply, it's London rap music. Got it. Cool. Got it. 
Check database for crimes in vicinity. Hi, Sophie. Please check Yards OS for any violent crimes in Peckham on the night of Jerome's murder. On it. Take her about four or five seconds. And she'll be able to respond back to us. Perfect. Something came back. A 14-year-old boy was treated for, by paramedics in Peckham on the night of Jerome's murder. He believed he was a victim of an acid attack, but no injuries consistent with acid burns were found. Strange. Wait a sec. There's more. But wait, there's more. Our yard linguistics expert, Hugo, Hugo has relayed the following. Sources show acid is being coated in the slang words cocktail and spray paint. Please be vigilantly on the lookout for these words in any investigation. Hope this helps. So anytime somebody talks about a cocktail or a spray paint, that's acid, basically. Acid is being coated in, word, in slang words cocktail and spray paint. So how long have you been with intelligence? What should I do now? How, how long have you been with intelligence, Sophie? I mean, I already have an idea of what we should be doing now anyway, so I don't really need Sophie to tell me that because we, we, we're the damn genius detectives. We, we're going to solve this case. But Sophie's been going on nine years now. Funny story. I hacked Yards OS from my bedroom when I was 17. Got five armed units to respond to a code red bearded man handing out suspicious packages. They all turned up at a Santa, Santa workshop in Lancaster Square. Definitely traumatized some kids. Was facing 10 years for the hack, but when an old fowler heard about it, he offered me an internship instead. Being with intelligence ever since. That's cool. Let's ask her what I should do now just for the sake of asking. I'd start by revisiting the chat app in the victim's phone. If you see or if there are, were any coded references to acid, remember in this game, one clue leads to another. Oh, we're breaking the fourth wall here. <laughs> in this game, one clue leads to another, and what originally held no significance has or can become the smoking gun. Just like that. So even if we find a clue in somebody's chat, and then 15 minutes later we find a different clue in a different chat, we should always backtrack to the original chat just to see if something else is new now. Because what happens... 30 minutes down the road could affect what we just already viewed previously in the game or the investigation. Just like that. Perfect. On the ground. Bring in Lucas for questioning. Something tells me he knows about Jerome's murder. We're on the way to his address right now. All right. While they're doing that, let's go ahead and talk with forensics. Sweep the victim for DNA. I would appreciate it. Vikram, sure. Not the most pleasant task, but has to be done. Our pathologist at the scene has just taken some initial swabs. She's uploading them to the cloud as soon as possible. All right, let's go back to on the ground. Oh, let's interrogate the suspect. Yes, Lucas. Click here to start the interrogation. Beautiful. I kind of want to get more information before we interrogate Lucas, but it's not really letting me. All right, so we got Lucas there, shuffling papers and coughing. This interview is being recorded by this New Scotland Yard, London. I'm DCI Michael Sutherland and Detective Constable Tongue Tied is joining us via Yardling. Lucas, could you give us your full name? Lucas Toby Grant. Thank you. And your date of birth? The 9th? The 9th of the 1st, 2005. So January 9th, uh, 2005. Thanks. As you're aware, Lucas, your classmate Jerome Jacobs died last night, falling off a of Stafford Tower. We believe Jerome may have been murdered, and we just have a few questions to ask you. Is that okay? Is that okay, Lucas? And, and, and Lucas is okay. All right, So what? so what happened June 7th? How well do you know Jerome? Is mummy proud you're a criminal? <laughs> Let's go straight to it. Is mummy proud you're a criminal, Lucas? <laughs> I don't think that's going to help. I don't think it's going to help for us to just go straight to calling Lucas a criminal. And, and 
<laughs> insulting him like that. But it is it's probably important for us to ask him like how well do you know how do you, how well do you know Jerome? Let's start with your relationship to the deceased Jerome Jacobs. Were you too close? He's probably going to say that they, like they were friends or something, right? Lucas appears nervous. Well, we go to school together, but like that's about it. Barely know him really. Jerome, you taking a knife? Lucas, yes. That I think that's from the 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 text chat that that Jerome had with Lucas, but we didn't really go through too much of that chat. But it has to be from the from the chat because they're quoting each other or quoting Lucas and and Jerome. We have Jerome. But I'm just gonna let Lucas know that we have Jerome's smartphone and we can see a lot of stuff so he might as well just tell us everything he knows because we're going to find out regardless lucas we have access to the virtual model of jerome's smartphone it's in your best interest to tell us the truth like we know you guys talk we know you share each other's phone number so we know you guys are friends why you got his phone that's not legal man you can't just look through his messages no nah, man that's that ain't legal under Section 3 of the Digital Crimes 2017 Legislation Act, a detective can be granted access to the smart device or devices of a murder victim in an open investigation. So I'm afraid, Lucas, it's perfectly legal. Is SE15 even a real game? So I'm guessing SE15 is something that they talked about in their chat. I wish we would have went back and looked at that chat because I have no idea what we're talking about. We know about the spring block attack. I don't even know what a, I don't know anything about the spring block attack. <laughs> You're our prime suspect. Lucas isn't our prime suspect. I don't think so. I mean, they're friends, right? I, I have no idea though. I can I can I Okay, I can go back. I can go back to the interrogation. Lucas, you're just gonna sit in the interrogation room while I look through your guys' messages here. So this is uh so that was uh SE15 chat. There's a little bit here. Only one, only thing getting me through this class. Okay, hold on. Let's. Uh, this... from a knife oh, from did, did a Look, I don't know if that's copyright. <laughs> I don't want... It looks, it's just, it's, it's a song. Crystal's new track. Look, I don't know if it's copyright. I don't need to get in trouble with copyright infringement. None of that. Uh, best female rapper in the UK. Best friends. They were bros. Uh, now they're bros with Deops. Deops. We already saw this picture right here of Lucas. You are so bait blood. Bait blood. What? Aaron looking down Miss Hen Heming <laughs> Hemingway's dress when she's leaning over the desk solving his math problems. You little perverts. <laughs> I'm not trying to hide it. She's paying. Man's in love. Gonna marry Miss Bo Miss Boomtang. <laughs> Only thing getting me through this class. Victim attend... We'll check out the clue here in a minute. Going to marry your right hand, fam. <laughs> F you, Lugas. At least uh, I get I get gal galdum galdum. I'm not sure who galdum is. <laughs> Probably didn't even say it right. Since when you got girl, Lucas? When I was piping Aaron's sister last night. <laughs> Damn. Damn, Aaron. <laughs> Fucking faggot. Uh, shut up. Enough. Got a surprise for you tonight. Sturdy vibe. Peckham ends. Large party on the night of the murder. So the sturdy vibe is the lar at, at Peckham ends is a large party. My guy, we're all going. Nice. Full of surprises today, bro. Got a couple little gifts there. You coming out, Jerome? Do you have some revision to do? Boys always got his head jammed in a book. So Jerome sounds like he's, you know, he he's considered to be smart amongst his friends. There, like he's always got his head in a book. He's always reading something, maybe. So maybe maybe he's just like, like he's good in school and stuff. Who knows? Got to kick back and enjoy myself sometime. That's true. That's that's very true. All work and no play makes Jerome a a baddie crease. Don't know what a baddie crease is, <laughs> precisely. So whose vibe is it? My olders, he linked me the deets, got a free yard, gonna be wavy. Unidentify older friend. Since when you got any olders? 12 Castle Walk, location of the rave, okay. 
SE15, 3QZ. What can I say? Man's got links. Don't chat, Grease. I know those ends. Springbrock gang round those okay. ways. Rival gang located near the party address. Better strap up. Yeah, let's take our AKs and uh, with us, Kieran. <laughs> I don't think they have AKs with them. Hold on my Bora. Lugas intent to carry a knife to the party. So a Bora is, a, I guess, considered a knife. You taking a knife, Lugas? So am I. Kieran's taking a knife. Lucas taking a knife. Why? Aaron's is a bad idea. Protection, bruv. Shut up, you fucking uh, Puzio Iron. <laughs> I thought we were gonna, we were just gonna get waved and chirp see some girls. <laughs> Why you always have to get, get gas, Lucas? Don't worry yourself, younger. Yeah, bruv. Uh, so we're meeting at the Peckinplex at nine. The, the Peckinplex, I'm guessing, is a maybe a, a movie theater. The Plex. Maybe not. Maybe it's just a complex. Uh, calm. Jerome agrees to meeting. Skeen. What people bringing. Just some beers, I think. All about the rum and coke. Yo, Aaron, my boy. <laughs> the rum and coke. I'm right there with you. Gotta love the rum and coke. Man's mixed some bar, uh, some bear strong cocktails. Lucas used code reference to the sulfuric acid. Think I'm going to stick with the beers. Just a splash and you're gone. Talking about the acid again. Nice. Might have to try some. Me and Aaron are here. Uh, where are you, Wasteman? Where are you, Wasteman? Will and Aaron meeting at, at the meeting point. Two minutes. Here now. Jerome arrives at the meeting point. Jerome and Aaron routing now. Jerome heads towards the... Looks like they're heading towards the party. We're in. They're at the party. Party's popping still. Bare faces. Sounds like it's... Sounds very busy. Very, very lit up. Uh, with Lucas nearly there outside. So Karen and, and Lucas just arrived at the party. Let us in. One minute. Check Aaron moving. Uh, Keisha? Got no chance. Got her number. My guy. <laughs> Aaron got that number. Let's go. Did you just uh, Did you just leave Lucas? Saw him duck out with Kieran. So Lucas and Kieran left the party. Fuck this. I'm tired. I'm going home. Jerome leaves party alone. Shit, just saw this. You gone. Where everybody go. So Will, last one remaining. So Will was the last one remaining at the party, I guess. Bunch of ghosts. And then there's Lucas. Sounds like he's running. Okay. Sounds like Lucas was under under stress. So it did it did sound like Lucas was running. Let's go ahead and check the, the chat with his mom. This is Jerome's mom. And uh there's probably some yeah, there's definitely some some clues in here. We'll get to those here in a second. Pick up some washing liquid on your way home, baby. Okay, mom. Thanks, son. So proud of you, darling. Your teachers were so impressed with your grades. You really are a star. Thanks, mom. I was quite surprised I did so well. I think I really like history. So, so Jerome seems like a really good school student. Like he he he's smart. He does well in class. He's got he's got he's got some promise with with history there. Like he he seems to enjoy history. Maybe you'll become a historian. It's a good, it's a good career. I don't think so. Yeah, but he doesn't like it. <laughs> Actually thinking like a reporter for Vice. They got to go pretty cool. They get to go to pretty cool places. I know them. Hey, that's cool. My son, the Vice reporter. Hell yeah. Look what I found. It must be Jerome. When did you get so big? I remember that day. Hey, baby, you're all right. Didn't seem yourself at dinner. I'm okay, mom. So they got, it went from like really happy, kind of like nostalgic and, and happy with each other to like, something's wrong. Like w what's wrong? Is it about the girl you've been seeing? What's her name? I don't really want to talk about it. I'm fine. Jerome troubled by something clearly. Okay, darling, can you pick up your sis from after school club, sweetheart? We'll be a bit late home. Okay, mom. I'm sorry about Marcus. Oh, so something happened with Marcus. Who is Marcus though? He's got a bad temper, just like your father used to. So he's he's not Jerome's father. Marcus isn't Jerome's father, but maybe the guy that mom is dating. He shouldn't touch you, mom. I told him if he touches you again, he's fucking dead. So Marcus is putting his hands on mom, and that we ain't, we ain't having that shit. 
New person of interest is Marcus. Marcus' stepdad has a temper. Temper. Marcus violently violent towards Jerome's mother. Jerome threatened Marcus. You know I know people. Don't you talk like that, Jerome. Don't you ever talk like that. Not in my home. You don't solve problems with violence. I'm sorry, Mom, but I won't let him treat you like that. He's left home for a few days to cool to cool down. So Marcus left home for a few days. And believe me, I'm going to be taking taking him to, or I'm going to be talking to him when he comes back. But I don't want you to have any part in it. That's my responsibility. Okay, Mom. You know, baby, Marcus aside, you've been acting very different lately. These last few days, you promise everything's okay. So Jerome is acting out of character. Yes, Mom. Love you, baby. Love you, Mom. Watching a film at Peck and Plex and then going around going around errands to play Xbox. So Peck and Plex was a was a movie theater. I, I was right. It's a it's a it's a it's a movie plex. Mom believes Jerome playing Xbox with Aaron the night of the murder. Oh, so he told his mom he was going to going to see a movie and playing video games, and instead he went to that rave. Oh, he lied to his mom. It's not good. Okay, sweetheart. Remember, it's a school night. I know, Mom. I'll be working late this evening, back around 9.30, just in time for Bake Off. Cool, Mom. Enjoy. Thanks, sweetheart. Enjoy the film. Do say hello to Aaron's mom for me. Good night, my darling. Mom going to sleep. And then, oh, it's so sad because the mom, after that, never talked to her son ever again. Who would, you know, she, she, there's no way for her to know that that was going to be the last thing she said to Jerome. That's so sad. Now, is there anything new? Now that we've talked to, we went through the mom's chat. Is there anything new in here? There isn't. So let's go ahead and go back to the interrogation. Can we check out the BBO news? We did see something with the BBO news. John Greenland's award charitable honor. Mexico investigates virus outbreak. Superpower billionaire Raymond Steele has demonstrated technology for a purpose person to move objects remotely with their mind. Boy dies. Oh, yeah, this is the boy 16 dies after suspicious tower London Tower block fall. A 16-year-old boy died has died after falling from a London Tower block, police have said. The incident is being treated as a suspicious uh, as suspicious with multiple reports of commotion heard prior to the fall. The fall occurred at Stafford Tower, Peckham, at about 2.30 BST on Friday. Detective um, Chief Inspector Michael Southern said detectives were trying to piece together events leading up to the boy's death and urged everyone with information to get in contact. No arrests have been made. And then there's a document... What is that? A document reveal former PM's Smarties obsession. All right. Let's go ahead and read through these short little news stories. John Green Greenlee's name, the annual Giving Hero by Charity Trust. Musician and philanth philanthropist <laughs> John Greenlee's has been named as the Charities Trust annual Giving Hero for this charitable service. Mr. Greenlees has raised and given over 20 million euros or 20 million, 20 million pounds to be to a number of different charities over the past 15 years. The charity trust com commended Greenlees excellent work and considered him a role model for a public figure. The rest, the recipient charities are largely focused on cancer research as well as helping victims of domestic abuse. Greenlees has stated these two issues are very dear to my heart. John Greenlees became first became well known as the lead singer of the synth pop band The Shutters, who formed in 1977. They disbanded in 1985, but he has since had a successful career in other bands on television. So he's he's he's, he's doing good. He's he's giving a lot of, a lot of money to charity. That's that's really nice of him. Mexico virus outbreak mystery illness investigated in her Hermosillo. Hermos, Hermos, an unknown stomach virus has infected dozens of people in Hermosillo, Mexico, the largest city in northwestern state of Sonora. At least 32 cases have been confirmed, with seven being severe enough to require hospitalization. 
Mexico's social media is rife with speculation of the links to the 1996 outbreak of the MAGD, the Mexican Acute Gastric Disease, which began in Oaxaca and killed 877 around the world. The Hermosillo Health Board has stated an investigation has been launched and that all necessary precautions are being taken with those already ill. A spokesperson for the Global Health Institute stated it is unwise to speculate at this time on the type of virus, but we will be closely monitoring the situation. So a uh, Raymond Steele demonstrates superpower human microchip implant. Entrepreneur Entrepreneur billionaire Raymond Steele has demonstrated technology for a person to move objects remotely with their mind. Steele unveiled this technology at a public demonstration for his venture, Teledynamics. A volunteer implanted with a microchip in their brain could directly move small objects containing a similar chip. Using their mind, the participant successfully moved a toy car up a ramp and knocked over a pile of blocks. Some scientists have raised ethical concerns over the use of brain implants in a health, uh, healthy patient. Mr. Steele responded, saying, These feats may be small, but they have massive implications. Imagine the benefits to those who are paralyzed or with reduced motor functions. Many on social media have lauded the breakthrough as real-life superpowers. And then we have... Declassified documents reveal former PM's obsession with smarties. Recently declassified government documents have revealed former Prime Minister Joan Fowler's obsession with smarties. The document include daily schedules that detail how Joan Fowler insisted on having a constant supply of the chocolate sweet. I didn't know smarties were chocolate sweets. That's more like M&M's. Smarties to me are like a, a fruity tart chalk candy. <laughs> It's kind of like chalk, but it's fruity and tart. It's not um, not chocolate in any way. Packets of Smarties were discreetly placed and replenished in every location she, she went, including prime minister's cars, the cabinet room, and even the Downing Street lavatories. In declassified memos, private secretaries expressed concern at the PM's reaction to a lack of Smarties at intentional trade talks or international trade talks. Joan Fowler rose to power in 1970s, becoming the first female prime minister in 1979. Her national party government won three successive elections before she was ousted in 1990. Interesting. Very interesting. I would like to try those Smarties. They sound delicious. They sound like M&Ms. It sounds... Let's get back into the interrogation room with Lucas. What is... What, can we Can we actually scroll that? No. All right. Enter Enter the room. All right. What were we just telling him? So I'm afraid it's, it, it, it is perfectly legal to go through his 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 phone because he he's dead and it's part of the investigation. Look, it, we've already explained that to Lucas. Now, Lucas, is SE15 even a real gang? That that is the group chat that they had with Lucas, Aaron, Will, and and Jerome, and Kieran. We know about the Springlock attack. Our, your, so I'm going to ask him about the SE15. Is that even a real gang? A hardened criminal gang or just a bunch of little kids playing rude boys? Fuck no. <laughs> ask around Peckham ends. Everybody knows SE15. We don't play. So he's saying he's saying that they are a gang. He's saying that they're that they're that they're legit. We murk anyone who steps to us like Springlock. Fuck Springlock. <laughs> <laughs> so you attack Springblock or SE15 and Springblock at war. Karen leads S5, SE15, right? So so you attack Springblock then. Uh, you led an SE15 attack on Springblock at the night of the Jerome's murder. Are our, our SE15 and Springblock at war? And we understand Kieran Stevens is de facto leader of the SE15 gang. Can you tell us about his, about him? Um, hmm. I don't know if he's going to throw Kieran under the bus or not. I mean, we kind of already know that SE15 and Springblock are at war. We don't really need to ask him that. But I am curious, like, do we ask him about the attack on Springblock? I don't think we I remember hearing anything about the attack, but I do remember reading in their group chat 
that they have beef with spring block and that they were right around the corner, but they didn't say anything about attacking him. Let's 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 ask him about Kieran. Does Kieran lead the SC15? Tell us tell us a little bit about him. Kieran ain't no leader. Boy just follows what I say. So Lucas is claiming that he's the leader. He, he just follows what Lucas says. So you're the leader of SE15. So Lucas is the leader of SE15. So you attacked Springblock, our SE15 and Springblock at war. Cheers for the confession, Lucas. <laughs> Thanks for the confession. We're, we're going to put you up good and put you behind bars now. We're going to lock you up, Lucas, but thanks for that confession. Even though we have that, let's go ahead and we want to make sure that we ask these other questions as well because that could lead to additional clues. Um, so you you two are at war. That will lead into like the attack on Spring Block. He's getting upset. I'm not saying anything more about any of this shit. Now I want to fucking go home now. You're a prime suspect. Get comfortable. We have reams of incriminating data. Help us. Look, Lucas, you help us. We're, we're going to help you. We just want to protect you. We You have your whole life ahead of you. The more we know, the more we can help you. Like, that's going to help him open up more to us, I think. Maybe not. Maybe not. But I think that'll do better than, than threatening him. Saying that we have reams of incriminating data. You don't understand Jerome's phone incriminates you. The silence will not save you. That That's actually not... Not a bad sentence. It's actually not a bad sentence. You're the prime suspect. Get comfortable. Lucas, you're the prime suspect of this murder investigation. You're not going anywhere. So, now, I don't think that's right. I don't think we want to go that path. But saying that we have Jerome's phone and that your silence will not save you is interesting. However, I think if we ask him, like, like, look, we're here to help you. You need to be there to help us. I think that's going to play better for him. I think he'll, he'll open up to us a little bit more. How are you going to protect me? You don't even know me. I got my mom and sisters to look after me. My mom's ill. I need to go home, man. Oh, I got my mom and sister to look after. So Lucas is looking after his mom and sister because his mom's ill. He needs to go home. I told you I didn't do nothing to Jerome. This is abuse, man. Well, we didn't say anything. We didn't say you did anything to, to Jerome. Would you like to be home for supper? If if you if so, tell us what happened that night. I'll give you my word. You'll be home for supper like nothing ever happened. This can go two ways, Lucas. If you tell us the truth, we will do everything in our power to help you. But if you continue to resist, I can promise you will regret it. Wake up, Lucas. This is murder. You are the prime suspect. You need to wake up and start talking, son. You are not going anywhere. Look, um, I, I feel like we should give him an ultimatum. Like this could go two ways. I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and say that Lucas is the is the prime suspect because I don't think he is the prime suspect of Jerome's murder. He might have played a part in it, but not a direct part into Jerome's murder. Like he might have been there. He might have been he might have been present during all of it. He might have started a fight between between Spring Block and Jerome, and then they got they caught up to Jerome and threw him off. But I, that's possible, but I, he's not the direct cause of it. So I don't want to say that he he's the murderer. But give him an ultimatum, like letting him know, like, hey, you got two ways to go. We can either you know, you can either tell us the truth, you can, we'll, we'll help you out in every every way that we can, or you can resist and you're going to regret it. I think that's a good way to do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's talk, Lucas. Let's talk. I like that. I like that. We all went to a party that night. The whole mandem. Jerome, Aaron, Will, me, Kieran but me and Kieran left the party early to attack Springblock. Question. It's not like that. We just wanted to show them uh, they can't violate us. They can't violate SE15. It looks like we're getting some clues. We have a shite ton of clues. All these clues that we were getting from the um from the chat as well as as mom so that's 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 where all these clues are coming from but the most recent clues here is that lucas confirms he and kieran left the party lucas motivated lucas motivated to protect se15 reputation lucas claimed uh to be the leader of se15 and lucas claims that se15 are a violent gang 
A lot of a lot of clues, a lot of information there. Let's go ahead and jump back into the into the the, the interrogation. They can't violate SE fifteen. Go on, and that's why you that's why you brought a knife. What is SE fifteen? Look, we already know what SE fifteen is. Um, should we bring up the knife? And that's why you brought a knife. So yeah, yeah. Look, look. Let's bring up the knife. Like we need. He needs to know that we we know. Kieran didn't. He changed his mind. But my mind was made up. No way. I'm going into spring block ends not tooled up. You don't understand. It's not just about my protection. How am I going to protect Kieran if I'm not gripping? It's dangerous thinking. That's actually it. Actually, makes sense. So what happens? It's it's da it's it's dangerous thinking, but it's also like you you did you you put yourself in that position. Like you didn't need to put yourself in that position. You didn't need to go to spring block ends. I don't know. What happens next? What what happens next, Lucas? Well, we come up on a couple of youngers. We know they're with spring block. Okay. Boy was wearing one of them chrome masks. All the spring block boys be wearing the uh, be wearing them chrome masks these days. One squares up to me, so I have a slap up. And then you pulled the knife out, and then you took out the cocktail. And then yeah, then you took out the cock. Did you take out? The, the, is that that when you took out the cocktail that you prepared? You had a slap up. You took out the cocktail, threw it in his face. There's no need to die, Lucas. We know all about the acid attack. It was no acid attack. That was a window cleaner, bro. <laughs> it was Windex. He threw Windex in his kid's face. <laughs> window cleaner, yeah. Explain. Well, I wanted the I wanted the boy's mask, so I I said to him, "You're gonna give me that mask, bro." Boy says, "How are you gonna make me do that?" So I go. Acid, bitch. <laughs> You're going to give me that mask. How are you going to make me do that? Acid, bitch. <laughs> and sprayed window cleaner in his face. Boy threw off the mask in a heartbeat. That's quite smart. Poor kid must have been terrified. Please, look, go ahead and continue. Continue the story, Lucas. <laughs> I don't think I could be... I wouldn't be a good a good detective in, interrogating. They they would be telling me stuff. I'd be laughing my ass off. Acid bitch. <laughs> so then I pick up the mask. I say SE uh, SE fifteen did this punk, and then me and Kieran just start breezing it, man. Kieran goes one way, I go the other. Can already hear one of the boys calling up Springbok olders, and they pack waps waps skangs. They got guns. <laughs> right. Anyway, I keep running. A few minutes later, I clocked Jerome walking. On the other side of the road, must have been handing, uh, must have been heading home for for the uh, from the party. So I shout to him, Jerome, spring block, come and run. But the fool doesn't hear a word. He's got his headphones in. I shout again, nothing. So I just kept running. So Lucas led spring block straight to Jerome. Ditched the mask on the corner, and that's it. Ran all the way home. What do you think happened to... Yeah, what do you think happened to Jerome? Spring block got him. They must have known he was SE-15. I saw the news about the fall this morning, and I knew. They didn't even have to say his name, and I knew. Lucas sighs deeply. Word on the street. Springbok orders chased him down. Poked him up. Stabbed him. And threw him off the roof of his own tower block. Lucas is getting emotional now. I should have never left the party that early. None of this would have happened. This is not your fault. This is all your fault. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying it's all his fault. But I'm not saying it's none of his fault either. It's partially your fault. Like, is there is there any middle ground? It's partially your fault, Lucas. Like, you led them straight to Jerome. That's potentially... You went to Spring Block, instigated a fight. You led them 
on a chase which led them straight to Jerome, whether they knew that Jerome was SC15 or not, apparently got a hold of him and threw him off the threw him off the da- the tower. So look, it, it's partially your fault. It's it might not be all your fault, but I think it's more your fault than not your fault. So I'm uh, look, your stupid and reckless fight with Springbok member may have cost Jerome his life. This tragedy falls entirely on your shoulders, Lucas. Not not entirely, but pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy, Lucas. Lucas sinks submissively in his, into his chair. He avoids eye contact. Can I go home? I want to go home now. Please. You're free to leave. We're charging you with assault. We're charging you with possession. Um, I think at this point in time, I don't think we're going to charge Lucas with anything. We're just going to let him go home. I don't think we need to charge him with anything. The, 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 the main goal is finding out who killed Jerome, not charging petty crimes to to Lucas who sprayed another kid in the face with window cleaner like <laughs> even though window cleaner could probably burn somebody's eyes and you you're gonna have to like flush that out but look I, I that's not that's not what we're here with you're free to leave Lucas no charges we'll be in touch soon no charges yet without meeting the eyes of the detectives Lucas rises and leaves interrogation room B that was good Tide yeah it was I, I, I was jam genius but remember He's just a child. I didn't charge him for anything. I know he's a child. He's just a little kid. I didn't charge him for nothing. Is there still something going on in here? I don't think so, right? I think it's I think it's done. I think it's over. All right, let's go back to the chat. Oh, forensics. What do we have with the Vikram? Could you sweep the victim for DNA? Appreciate it. Sure. Not the most pleasant task, but has to be done. Our pathologist at the crime scene has just taken some initial swabs. We knew about that. She's uploading them to the cloud as soon as possible. So apart from paramedics and first responding officers... There was some unusual mixed DNA on a fresh cut on the victim's face, Jerome and another individual. Just cross-checking our database, Vikram is busy. Well, well, we have a match, a Marcus Albert Jones. One prior conviction, does that name mean anything? Yeah, Marcus is, uh, I guess, the guy that's, that's dating Jerome's mom. At least that's what it seemed like in the chat with, with the mom. You're a bloody legend, Vikram. Damn, damn legend. You are a babe, Vikram. Here's one of the lead suspects. Awesome find. Now we'll be able to get in touch with uh, Marcus, hopefully. We'll be able to go out and maybe interrogate Marcus. I do what I can. Good luck with it. Thank you. Um, let's go to intelligence. I'd start by revisiting the chat. We already did that. Remember this game? We already did that just like that. Identify Marcus and pull records. Could you identify Marcus from Jerome's mom chat and pull the records? Of course. Uh, time to flex these computer skills. Oh, she's gem she's genius. It only took her five seconds to find out all this information. Damn, damn genius. Okay. Here's what I got. Marcus Albert Jones, 45 years old, one prior conviction, 1998. Blinded a man in a blinded a man in a brawl outside a bar in Brixen. Blinded? Like, like he snuck him or he beat him so bad that it made the guy go blind. <laughs> Served five years in uh, Pentonville. Marcus fired from his job two months ago. Okay, so pulled his employment record too. He managed the street cleaning vehicles across the borough of Southwark. But seems he has, uh, but seems he was dismissed two months ago for intoxication behind the wheel. Currently... Status unemployed. Thanks, Sophie. What did you have for breakfast? Hey, look, thanks, Sophie. I don't. I don't need to know what Sophie had for breakfast. Like, <laughs> I mean, do I? Do I need to know what she had for what, what she had? For, I don't think I need to know what she had for breakfast. Let's talk to Sutherland on the ground. We're on the way to his address now. We got Lucas. He's in inter- interview interview room A. Let's get to it, Detective Tide. I'll see you in there. We already did all that. We need to bring Marcus in for questioning. Conduct a uh, patrol of Springblock. Want to hear a joke? I, nobody wants to hear a joke. 
We do need to get Bronson and McGuire. Please conduct a patrol of the Spring Block neighborhood. Jerome's friend Lucas must have implicated a rival gang in the area. Sure thing. We'll conduct our patrol and report back. We need to bring in Marcus. Marcus' DNA was traced to the cut on Jerome's face. When, uh, wherever he is, find him and bring him in immediately. So we, we can interrogate Marcus. Spoken with Jerome's mother, Maya. Oh, so, so mum's Maya. He's not at home and his phone's off. I put a citywide alert. We'll find him. Don't worry. Beautiful. Five seconds later, got him. Wasn't hard to find. He's sobering up in inter inter interview room B. He was pretty intoxicated. As far as I can tell, he uh, he thinks he's being brought in on domestic abuse charges, but that might uh, that might all be an act. Let's inform him of this of his stepmom's stepson's death in the interview and see how he reacts. See you in there. All right. Let's check, uh, not the clues, although we do have a shite ton of clues again. Um, we need to check the phone. Is there anything else in SE15? Any other new clues that may have popped up? Doesn't look like it. No. Anything new in mum? Doesn't look like it either. Okay. Nothing new. Um... Everything else is locked. What's vibes? Okay, so these these are tracks. I don't know if they're copyright or not. I'm not going to play them. <laughs> I might listen to them on my own time, but I'm not going to play them. I'm not going to record the playing because it could very well possibly be copyright. I don't want don't want to get in trouble doing that. All right, Marcus in interrogation, interview room B. Let's talk to him. He thinks he's being brought in for domestic abuse charges. This interview is being recorded at New Scotland Yard, London. The, the, uh, I'm DCI Michael Sutherland, and Detective Constable Tongue-Tied is joining us via Yardlink. Marcus, could you give us your full name? Look, why the fuck am I here? <laughs> full name, Marcus. Fucking hell. <laughs> Marcus Albert Jones. Thank you. And your date of birth, the 30th of July, 1972. And what is your relation to Jerome Jacobs? I'm his stepfather. Look, I don't know what the little prick told you, but he's a liar. And honestly, any issue I may or may not have be having in uh, any issues I may or may not be having in my house will be resolved in my house. So if you don't mind, please tell us about Jerome's mother. What happened June seventh? Jerome was murdered last night. So. Do we go straight to Jerome was murdered last night? Or do we ask him about what happened on June 7th? Or do we talk to him about Jerome's mom? Like, he thinks he's there for domestic abuse. Do we even... Do we do we start off with that? We're not here investigating domestic abuse, though. We're here investigating a murder of Jerome. So, do you know what happened on June 7th? Please take us through what happened... Uh, what you did on June 7th, Thursday. I would have been working. I operate and manage the machine cleaning vehicles across the two districts. So that's where I would have been. Okay, when did you last see Jerome? Please tell us about Jerome's mother. How long have you been beating Jerome's mother? How, how long have you been beating Jerome's mother? Huh? Huh? Look, when did you last see Jerome? Well, that morning, I saw him at home as I was leaving for work. But he lost a job months back. Please tell us about Jerome's mother. Tell us about your relationship with Jerome. So tell us about your relationship with Jerome. I feel like that would have been a question we would have asked first, maybe, but maybe not. Boy's a fucking handful. Smart kid, but arrogant, you know. Thinks because he spends his evenings buried in a book that he's better than you. He probably is better than you. Just, just being 
scenario. I've tried to school him on the ways of the streets, but he just doesn't want to learn. Man, okay, maybe he doesn't want to learn the ways of the streets. He want to learn. He wants to learn the way of knowledge. He wants to learn the way of the books. He doesn't want to be on the street like you. <laughs> school him how? Uh, you felt threatened, Marcus. How was your formal education? Uh, school him how, Marcus. What are you, what are you, what are you trying to school him on in the streets? Well, once I tried to teach him how to fight, you know, uh, when his mom was out, really tried connecting with him. Just us lads, a couple of beers, showed him the, the old one-two. Not interested. Looks at me like I'm I'm a mug. But ask him at the dinner table about some fucking American civil rights leader from bloody 1935. You won't hear the end of the, blo uh, the, the, the bloody end of it. <laughs> And it's just the way he thinks he's better than, than you because he reads a fucking book, his history book. Does my head in. Have you had violent thoughts about Jerome? Do you wish Jerome would just disappear? Jerome was murdered last night. Um, You ever get any violent thoughts about Jerome? A desire to hurt him, Marcus? What's the fuck wrong with you? He's my stepson. Are you fucking sick or something? Look, Jerome was murdered last night. We believe he was murdered. Pushed off Stafford Tower last night. Fuck off. You fuckers will say anything. Murdered. Marcus scoffs. Clearly doesn't believe us. We're about to show him his picture. We're sorry to have to inform you. Blood drains from Marcus's face. I don't understand. Marcus looks... To both of you. Jerome. Sutherland gently nods. Okay. Tell us about Jerome. Please tell us about Jerome's mother. Tell us exactly what happened last night. Tell us exactly what you did. Wait a fucking minute. Just shut the fuck up. Marcus. I said, shut the fuck up. <laughs> My stepson was murdered. Wait a minute. Marcus, deep breaths. Deep breaths. Deep fucking breaths. <laughs> I murdered my stepson. So he's getting really upset. Off Stafford Tower. Deep breaths. Marcus rises from his seat. Blood rushes to his head. Marcus, get a hold of yourself now, or you will be placed in a cell. Marcus, now, Marcus falls back into his seat, disoriented. You must focus for Jerome's sake. Your DNA was found on Jerome's cut. You murdered him. You murdered him, didn't you, Marcus? Look, your DNA was found on Jerome's face, on a cut on his face. How do you explain that? My DNA? From his face? The hell of a fuck with that? Oh, you, you got to remember. Marcus's eyes light up. Oh, Christ. Fucking hell. Look, I, I know how this must seem, but it's really not what you think. Marcus, you need to start talking now. I did see him last night. It's such, it's such a fucking blur. All I remember was him coming around the corner, a quiet street. I called out. He tried going like that had uh, he tried going like he hadn't heard headphones in so I grabbed him. I said we need to talk son. And what did he say? Marcus grimaces. That's right. He goes I don't talk to strangers. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, I don't talk to strangers. <laughs> Boy. So I give him one swift backhand, then I let him go. And this is going to sound strange, but the boy takes out a mask, puts it on his face, and just walks off. Or did I dream that bit? What what mask? Can you can you describe the mask? That's domestic and child abuse, Marcus. <laughs> can you is it is it this mask? Are you talking about this mask? We're showing him the picture of the uh, chrome mask. That's the one. Yeah, that's the, that's the mask. It's like a gang mask. 
It's the spring block gang mass. But Jerome doesn't roll with that crowd. At least, I think he doesn't. You're free to go, Marcus. That's domestic and child abuse. Does red, yeah, does red man mean anything to you, Marcus? Yeah, red man. The hell is that? We're not sure. Sounds like a fucking gangbanger. I don't understand. Jerome isn't part of that world. He basically, technically, he is, I guess. A witness believes so. You're free to go. That's domestic and child abuse. So, man, what do we do with, with Marcus here? Do we charge him with domestic and child abuse? I mean, he backhands Jerome. The thing is that he's been beating his mother. We do have... We don't have proof that he's beaten, been beating his mother other than the chat history. So do we just... Do we let him... I mean, again, we're investigating the murder. We're not investigating child abuse or domestic abuse at this point. We can always backtrack to that. We can always come back to child abuse and, and domestic abuse and lock Marcus up for it. But as of right now, we're investigating the murder. You're free to go, Marcus. We're sorry for your loss. And, like, we'll figure it out. Like, if we need to bring you back in, we'll bring you back in. If I had known when I was holding him what would happen, I wouldn't have let him go. That's, I don't know if I believe you, Marcus, but that, that that's the right thing to say. You know that, right? Whoa, what just happened? Man and boy arrested in connection with fatal tower block fall released. A man and boy arrested in, well, they never got arrested. They just got brought in for, for uh, questioning. Right? I, didn't, I don't remember arresting them. In connection with the fatal tower block fall have been both released without charges. Jerome Jacobs, 16, died after falling from the Stafford Tower, Peckham, at about 2.30. Uh, a murder inquiry was launched after multiple residents reported hearing commotion prior to the fall. Police are pursuing multiple leads as a part of the fast-moving investigation. This is very close-knit community, and people are understandably shocked by what has happened, Detective Chief Inspector Michael Sutherland said. Information from the from the public is vital and anyone who has seen any suspicious activity in the area or who has any information that may help our inquiries is asked to contact the incident room, uh, the incident room as soon as possible. That was the latest story. Oh, we got PC Bronson. Hello, Detective. Hello. Yeah, so uh, PC McGuire and I, we're just finishing up our patrol of the Spring Block neighbourhoods. Okay. All pretty quiet around here. Okay. If I'm honest, uh, Maguire's shitting himself a little bit. <laughs> Maguire chuckles. <laughs> right, so as I said, there's not really much going on around here, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna head back in in a minute. Um, so yeah, did you oh, hear that? Screaming in the distance. Don't move! Don't fucking move! Stay where you fucking are! Right, we've got a kid on the ground. He's been stabbed. Up. He's, he's holding his chest. Oh no. Don't move! Don't! He's running. He's running. Call an ambulance. Oh shit. Maguire, we need to split up. Bronson chased the attacker. Bronson aid the victim. Oh. Bronson is telling Maguire that they need to split up. But you know what? Oh, this is this is tricky. What's most important right now, and this can go multiple different ways, what's most important right now is the survival of the victim. You need to make sure that the victim survives. You need to make sure that you help that victim. That victim can help you potentially lead you to the, the direction of who the perpetrator is. It can, can, can help you identify who just stabbed him. However, if you don't chase after the person who just stabbed the victim, what if they stab somebody else? See, it's, it's tricky. What do you do? Do you help the person who just been stabbed? I mean, Maguire's there. Maguire can, Maguire can help the victim. Bronson can chase after the attacker. And Maguire, as long as Maguire helps the victim, like they'll be okay. So I think we should split up. I think Maguire's with the victim. Bronson chase the chase after the attacker. Catch that attacker. Two birds with one stone. I think that's the right. Okay, I'm going after him. I think that's right. Try and stop the blood, Maguire. Yeah, so Maguire. For the fucking night. Yeah, oh man. Scriptic original series. 
Scoring tongue tied. Let's go. I don't know if that was. I hope this isn't. Oh my goodness. I hope this. Look, I, I gotta. I gotta. I gotta turn the volume down. I hope that's not. Sp <laughs> copyright. That was cool. I don't know if that's gonna show that for everybody, but that's pretty cool. It says starring tongue tie. That that is. I like that. That's legit. That's awesome. Again, don't know if that's gonna say that for everybody. Like if you just play the game and you put your name in there, it might say starring whatever your name is. But that's pretty cool that it says starring tongue tied. And these, this is all the the credits, the original programmer, all that good stuff. I don't know if the there's the cast. DCI Sutherland, Sophie, Bronson, McGuire, Jerome Jacobs, Aaron, Will, Kieran, Lucas, Marcus, Bradley, Tara, Toby. I don't even know who Tara is, but you got Toby, Yasmin, Raheem, Kane, Winston. We don't, we don't know who half these people are. We're so so new in the uh in the in the game. We're gonna let the credits credits play out. But that was really cool that it said starring tongue tied. It, again, I don't know if it might say that for anyone that puts their name in, in, in the game, but that that was pretty cool. I like seeing that. Um again, I don't know if this if this music is copyright, so I had to kind of lower the volume. Don't want to get in trouble with all that. <laughs> but you never know. You never know. And I, I just don't wanna don't wanna put myself in that position. Okay. Coming up next on Dead Man's Fat. I hope this isn't copyright. Uh, so Red Man, it looks like Red Man is going to be the next, um, the next episode. It does look like each episode does have their own, their own little price periods. So episode buy episode two for three ninety nine. Play episode one. Didn't is that what unmasked? We haven't played that one yet. Play episode one. So there are a couple games here that you could you could play episode one of Unmasked. You can play Dispatcher free season. That's pretty cool. Couple seasons here. Uh, Red Red Redman is going to be the next episode for Dead Man's Phone. So we did play episode one. No, we didn't. Episode two is going to be Barbecue Sauce Everywhere. We just played Redman. Episode one was Redman. We just played Redman. Episode two is going to be. Uh, barbecue sauce everywhere, which is three ninety nine. It looks like each uh, each episode going forward is about three ninety nine. However, there is also unmasked here. You can play the first episode there. Looks like for free, uh, and then there's a free season right here for Dispatcher, which is really cool. So now again, you can download this game using my link if you want to help support myself. Uh, you can use my link. That's going to be located in the top of the description as well as the top of the comments pinned in the top of the comments to play, be able to play this game as well as unmask and dispatcher. Uh, however, if you want to just, if you're, if you're happy with just watching me play through it and, and, and listening to my reactions and seeing how we get through this game and, and seeing all the different decisions that we have to make and how that's going to unfold throughout the rest of the story. I'm perfectly happy with that as well. And if you're enjoying it, hit that like button. Let me know what you think of this game down in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Love you all, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.